Cause I will go, I will serve thee I will be part of your army No matter where you send me I'll share my testimony I will go, I will serve thee Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this fireside entitled, Come Unto Christ, I Will Go, I Will Serve. I am grateful to be with my wife, Sister Susan Bangader. We are joined this evening by Elder Yun Huan Che and his wife, Sister Bon Che, and Elder Carlos G. Revilio and his wife, Sister Marie Revilio. We welcome you to the grounds of the Luhug Chapel, adjacent to the beautiful Cebu Temple. Tonight, we are surrounded by well over 2,000 members from nearby stakes and districts. We send our warmest regards to everyone throughout the Philippines joining us on the Facebook page, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Philippines, and our YouTube channel. To open our program, a youth choir from Cebu, Philippines, Lilolan Stake, will perform, will bring the world his truth. Thereafter, Sister May Nunez from the Cebu, Philippines, Consolacion Stake will offer the invocation. Following the invocation, we will enjoy a video depicting the success of our area-wide initiative I will go, I will serve, I am one of 4,600. And we will then be blessed to hear remarks from Elder and Sister Che.
loving Heavenly Father, we gathered here today for this fireside and we're so much grateful for this opportunity that we arrive here safely. We are so much Heavenly Father for all members that are present here and especially to our area presidency. We are so much grateful, Heavenly Father, for, for all the leaders, especially our living prophet, Russell M. Nelson. And we are so much grateful, Heavenly Father, for your guidance and for, for all the families and individuals that are willing to help us when, our, when we needed help. And we are so much grateful that you bless us and forgive us. We are also grateful for the gospel and the atonement of Jesus Christ. Because of him, we have the chance to go back to your presence and to be forgiven. And now, Father, we ask thee, as we start this far side, we're able to feel the Spirit. And by your will and by your power, um, we pray that this far side will be successful and the rain will stop. We ask the Heavenly Father for thy blessings. And we, are, we ask thee to bless our leaders from our, from our living prophet, Russell M. Nelson, to our local leaders, that they may have the strength, and we may have the strength to overcome all the challenges in life. We, are, we pray, the Heavenly Father, to, to bless these people who are struggling both mentally and spiritually. And we ask thee to forgive us to all of our shortcomings and our sins that we've done today. We love thee so much, Heavenly Father, and this we pray in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We welcome you to this very special missionary fireside. I will go, I will serve. Will be invite others, will to invite others to come unto Christ by helping them receive the restored gospel through faith in Jesus Christ and His atonement, repentance, baptism, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, and enduring to the end. Today I reaffirm strongly that the Lord has asked every worthy, able young man to prepare for and serve a mission. You are assigned to labor in the... You are assigned to labor. You are assigned to labor in... As you will be worthy. You are assigned to labor in the... Love sister missionaries and welcome them wholeheartedly. What they contribute in this work is magnificent. In a nutshell, the success of uh, the 4,600 initiative, it was a way of giving us a, a better culture of what missionary work is in the Philippines. And it's such a wonderful opportunity to be part of this miracle. In the spirit of hashtag pass it on, Let's talk more about some of the remarkable things that are happening with leaders and parents working together to raise a powerful and miraculous rising generation. Dear Elder Ursulum, you are hereby called as to serve as a missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I will go, I will serve thee, I will be part of your army. <laughs> you are assigned no to labor in Ghana, Accra, Ibang Bansa. You are assigned to labor in Australia. <laughs> Kagayan ni Oro Mijo. Kagayan ni Oro Mijo. Kagayan ni Oro Mijo. Kagayan ni Oro Mijo.
in the Philippines in the Bava Mission. The Philippines but one mission. Bava Mission. In South Africa. Cavite Mission. Australia Milton. All missionaries teach and testify of the Savior. The spiritual darkness in the world makes the light of Jesus Christ needed more than ever. Everyone deserves the chance to know about the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. What a powerful video. My heart is full knowing that so many youth and young single adults responded to our challenge to become part of the 4,600 missionaries. My gratitude goes to the parents of the missionaries. Thank you for raising them in the gospel and entrusting them to the Lord for two years or 18 months as they serve in the mission field. I am also inspired by the many who have answered the call to serve without strong support in the home. These dear youth are amazing. My dear brothers and sisters, Kumusta. The I Will Go, I Will Serve campaign of the area princess to raise 4,600 missionaries was a resounding success. In May 2021, after all 40 missionaries were sent home due to the pandemic, we responded by the inviting, rising generation and of the Filipino members to go and serve. We set 46 missionaries applications as our goal by December 2022. So far, we have 3,695 missionaries serving in the, in the field. And we are anticipating more by the end of the year. Although the missionaries' workforce was reduced by health due to the pandemic, the number of baptisms increased to almost double the pandemic level, aside, uh, pre-pandemic level. Aside from the actual baptisms, the finding efforts and the number of the lessons taught also increased. This 4,600 missionary miracle is due in large part of the invitation extended by President Russell M. Nelson and his wife, Cecil Wendy W. Nelson, in the Worldwide Youth Devotional held in June 3rd, 2018. The prophet invited all the youth in the church to, quote, enlist in the youth battalion of the Lord and take part in the greatest challenge, the greatest cause, and the greatest work on earth. End of quote. As an Area 70, we have this responsibility to train and help our stake presidents and district presidents understand the purpose of 4600 so that they will be able to, to really catch the vision that uh, missionary work should, should continue. We're just so excited you know, to, to share this to the stake presidents. They receive the instruction and for them to be able to better really understand, they have prayed about it. And because they prayed about it, that's when the Lord revealed to them the specifics of the things that they need to do, how they will be able to be part of that 46 century. Ang ginawa ko po sa word ay bigyan ng oras ang mga kawataan ito na, na interviewin at kausapin regularly. Ang aming mga pinag-uusapan sa aming interview ay yung kanilang mga goals, papaano nila isasagawa at matutupad yung kanilang mga mga kagustuhan sa, sa buhay, papaano sila mag, mas magiging malapit sa Diyos, mas maging mapagmahal sa kapwa. Ang naging result na po ng uh, uh, palaging pag-uusap ay mas naramdaman nila na sila ay mahalaga. Naramdaman po nila na sila ay parte at uh, uh, kinakailangan na mahubog pa ang kanilang uh, talento at kanilang mga potentials. Ang naging epekto sa akin ng 
mission, naging matured ako, 10 times much better doon sa buhay ko before ako naging missionary. Sa mentorship program, kusang ginawa ito ng mga returned missionaries. Pag bago namin sila i-release, ang challenge namin sa kanila palagi is, sana may maigide ka o magabayan ka na isang future missionary na papalit sa iyo. Magugulat ka na lang, nag, uh, nagre-report. President, si brother ganito, may desire na siyang mag-mission nung kinausap ko at nag-share ako ng testimony. We have 45 missionaries in the, missionaries na po. Uh, sa 45 na nasa mission ngayon, o nasa area, headquarters, or nasa MTC, lahat po yan, produkto ng mentorship. I would liken them to the rising tide. And that rising tide can even carry the heaviest boat. And in like manner, this, this 4,600 young missionaries, or the rising generation as we say, they will be one of the factors that really will raise this church. It will continue to be a light to the world. As I travel around the Philippines, I am deeply impressed by the strength of the church and the faith of Filipino Latter-day Saints. To all priesthood leaders represented in the video, we just watch it. Thank you for your tireless service in the church. We also thank organization leaders for your inspiring leadership of the leading many young women and young men choose to go on a mission. But the influence of the righteous church leaders is only half of the equation. A gospel-centered home established by righteous parents is the best place for the rising generation to start. Developing their testimonies in Doctrine Covenant section 68, 25, the Lord has commanded parents to teach their children to understand the doctrine of repentance faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of living God, and of the baptism and the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on, the, on, on of the hands. Fine examples of this are Christopher and Melita Battalion, uh, Bat Baliton from Asingan, Pangasinan, parents of seven. They joined the church in 2012 with their three oldest children, and the four younger ones were baptized when they reached eight years old age. They were sealed for time and all eternity in the Manila Temple in 2013. Recently, I had the opportunity to visit the home of the beautiful Baliton family and learn that Brother Christopher passed away in 2020. The responsibility to continue the family food cart business fell on the soldier of the sister Melita with the help of the, her children, especially Christian Adam, the third child. When Adam expressed his desire to serve a mission and become one of the 4,600, he was concerned about living because he knew his mother relied on him as the runner and deliver boy of their food, food cart business. We felt Melita's great face as she said, I assured him that we will be all right. His other siblings will be there to help, end of quote. Sister Valiton also said it was the wish of her departed husband that Adam would serve a mission. She also said, aside from helping our brothers and sisters, who do not know about the true gospel of Jesus Christ. I really want to Elder Baliton's example to influence his younger siblings so they to be become full-time missionaries. End of quote. Elder Baliton is now faithfully serving in the Philippine Iloilo mission, and we enjoy the pleasure of meeting him personally during our mission visit. Thank you to all parents in the church for preparing your children to join the youth battalion of the Lord, like the mothers of the 2,000 stripping warriors. May we always teach our children not to doubt the Lord so they will go forth and serve. Parents and church leaders play an important part in modeling our children and youth to become battalion missionaries. 
Missionaries sacrifice a lot when they serve education and careers are put on hold. They miss their family and friends. And some even experience major trials and challenges. Some sacrifices are not as dramatic, but still very meaningful. Let me share the story of Sister Kyla Erin De, De Dios from Mintal Davao. Sister De Dios is 19 years old. I first met her back in February 2022. And since I am Korean, she shared that she was a hardcore BTS fan. She became a BTS army in 2017 because the world of their songs inspired, motivated, and comforted her. She even had a Twitter account with over 2,000 followers dedica dedicated just to support BTS. When I met her again recently, I mentioned BTS, but Sister Kyla reacted differently. She said she has been preparing for a mission and has joined the Lord's battalion. She is no longer BTS army, but will soon be in the Lord's army. She has submitted her mission papers and is excited, excitedly waiting for her mission call. What caused her mighty change of heart? The catalyst that jump-started her preparation was the FSY experience in her own words, quote, I have always wanted to become a servant of the Lord even uh, ever since I was in primary. I realized how turning away from worldly things truly blessed you spiritually. At FSI, I learned to focus on what you are building, not what you are leaving behind. End of quote. As we start to focus on the building our relationship with the Lord by reading the scriptures and keeping the commandments, we are becoming the Lord's battalion. We will become well prepared for the Lord's battle. Sister De Dios still loves BTS, but she loves the Lord more. My dear young brothers and sisters, is there anything in your life that you are prioritizing over your relationship with the Lord? I urge you to examine your priorities and make sure that you are focusing on the things that matter most, on the things that have eternal significance. I close my message with the words of our dear prophet, President Russell M. Nelson. My dear ex extraordinary youth, you were sent to earth at this precious time, this most crucial time in the history of the world, to help gather Israel. There is nothing happening on this earth right now that is more important than that. This is the mission for which you were sent to earth. I invite you to stand with the youth from all around the world and experience the thrill of being a member of the Lord Youth Battalion. Salamat kayo. Kanahan ko. Dear young men and young women, 안녕하세요. 사랑해요. I know that our Father in Heaven is so pleased with your response on missionary service. I testify that your mission will bless your life, even your future life. Dear parents and priesthood leaders, your efforts to support them to serve their mission brings joy to the Savior. Please know that God loves you, all of you, and he is proud of you. He will guide you to be successful in your life, whoever you are. I testify that Jesus Christ is working beside you. He is our Savior, who is in the center of our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. We gather.
wonderful opportunity to be part of the Lord's Youth Battalion knowing that I can be contribute and, and in building the Kingdom of God. We won't forget our covenants to preach of Christ and all His laws. We sacrifice time and talents where heroes in the world's greatest cause. I am so happy and thankful to be invited as one of the part of Lord's Youth Battalion. The Lord knows that everyone, every youth can be. Thank you to the young men and young women of the Davao, Philippines, West Stake for that stirring rendition of Youth Battalion of the Lord, Hope of Israel. Elder and Sister Che, we thank you for your inspired leadership that has continued from the time we first introduced the 4600 Missionary Miracle. Thank you for your tireless examples. Brothers and sisters, in recent months, the area presidency prayed fervently to our Father in Heaven to know His will regarding the direction and future of the 4600 I Will Go, I Will Serve initiative. It is now my blessing to describe for members of the Church throughout these beautiful islands a vision the Lord has granted us. I pray that God by His Holy Spirit will open within your minds and your hearts this vision with a clear and vivid understanding of the glorious future the Lord has in store for His children in this precious land. Near the conclusion of His earthly ministry, 
Jesus taught the parable of the talents. To the servant who was faithful in multiplying his talents, the Lord declared, quote, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things, close quote. In this same spirit, we have felt the Lord's approval of the remarkable achievement by members of the church throughout the Philippines who have answered the call to serve full-time missions. Now, having done well with this call to action, the Lord has granted a heightened vision for the future. Our motto has been, I will go, I will serve. In as each youth declares their commitment, they see on the stage of their mind themselves serving as a missionary. Young men see themselves one day wearing a white shirt and a tie. Young women see themselves wearing a dress and they both see themselves receiving a call from a prophet to spread the good news of the gospel. The Savior's pivotal role in our lives has now been more perfectly impressed upon our minds and our hearts. Brothers and sisters, as we move forward, the whispering spirit of the Holy Ghost inspires us to have a clear focus on the Savior, on his role in all that we do along the covenant path as we pursue and answer a call to serve. In preparing to go and serve, we must first and foremost, see Jesus Christ as the reason we do all that we do. Coming unto Christ is our primary motivating focus. We come unto Christ as we participate in the ordinances and covenants of the temple. We must see the temple and receiving temple ordinances and covenants we must not see those things as merely a box to be checked off on the way to serving a full-time mission. Our focus on coming unto Christ causes us to recognize the critical role the temple plays in bringing us to him. Our focus in what we do as members of the church is on the empowering, enabling power that comes through our Savior Jesus Christ. We know that he was appointed by our Heavenly Father to bring the gospel to the world, to organize the church of Jesus Christ, and to enact the infinite atonement and glorious resurrection. Our Savior's life and ministry makes all that we do meaningful. To little children, Jesus declared, quote, Come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Close quote. He warmly invited those who are heavily laden with the burdens and cares of life, saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And to all who thirst for living water, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, he proclaimed, Come unto me and drink. In light of the Savior's beckoning invitation, we now invite all members of the church to focus more precisely, more fully, and more fervently on how we can draw nearer to Christ through the ordinances and covenants made in the temple. In the ordinances and covenants, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost draws us nearer to Christ. We become sanctified and we are empowered to serve others just as our Savior has served us. The vision we introduce now is to see ourselves coming unto Christ and deepening our personal relationship with Him and through Him with our Heavenly Father. As we draw near to our Savior, His life, ministry, atoning sacrifice becomes the motivating force in all we do. Our rallying cry has been, I will go, I will serve. We set forth today the invitation with a commitment. Now we declare, come unto Christ. I will go. I will serve. In the pause between come unto Christ and I will go, 
our thoughts should be filled with the desire and commitment to come nearer to Christ by participating in the ordinances of the temple. In the ordinances, we find we receive a witness of the Holy Ghost. That witness is of the Savior's attributes and his character, his love and compassion. Those attributes are more fully revealed to our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. That revelation, in the midst of those ordinances, drives us forward then with a desire to serve others. In last month's General Conference, President Nelson counseled us all to focus on the temple. He declared, quote, It is his house. It is filled with his power. Let us never lose sight of the Lord in doing for us what the Lord is doing for us now. He is making his temples more accessible. He is accelerating the pace at which we are building temples. He is increasing our ability to help gather Israel. He is also making it easier for each of us to become spiritually refined. I promise that increased time in the temple will bless your life in ways nothing else can." Close quote. Tonight we introduce a new logo that depicts this vision. Come unto Christ. I will go. I will serve. We also see members of the church focused on developing a closer relationship with Jesus Christ on this logo by entering the temple and participating in sacred ordinances and covenants. Then they exit the temple empowered with a renewed, heightened, brighter commitment to serve. This logo has been cast and produced as a pin for the brethren and a beautiful pendant for sisters. It will be distributed as an emblem of our desire to experience the reality of this vision in our lives. So, dear brothers and sisters, no longer will we simply declare, I will go, I will serve, and only think of missionary service. With this heightened vision and our enhanced understanding, we now declare, come unto Christ. I will go to the ordinances of the temple and by the enabling power of those ordinances and covenants, I will serve God with all my heart. This heightened vision will indeed empower this great nation to increase our numbers of full-time missionaries but it will also empower us in every other way to live the gospel of Jesus Christ. Families will become more faithful as they unite to participate in the ordinances of the temple with a common goal to obtain the crowning ordinances of the temple, even the sealing of families for all eternity. We will be driven to have a calling and to be more committed and desirous to serve others as we magnify our callings. A few moments ago, we introduced the new logo. Now, let's enjoy together an animation of the vision in action. This very brief animation shows in the simplest way the Lord's vision for his saints in the Philippines.
Cause I will go, I will serve thee I will be part of your army No matter where you send me I'll share my testimony I will go, I will serve thee These shirts depict the logo you have seen this evening. They will be distributed to all active youth and young single adults in the Philippines between the ages of 12 and 30 years of age. The colors of the shirts are the same as the FSY colors the church has selected for 2023. Along with the shirts, the pins and pendants bearing the logo of this heightened vision will also be distributed to all active youth and adults throughout the Philippines. These tokens are emblems of our desire to unite together and draw nearer to the Savior. Now, joining us on stage are a few young men and young women who are preparing to serve full-time missions. Their journey will soon bring the most exquisite joy to their hearts and the lives of those they will serve. I'd like to invite my brethren of the presidency and our wives to present to them the pin and the pendant and the shirts that bear the new logo, Come Unto Christ, I Will Go, I Will Serve. Oh, they're beautiful. And you can imagine young men and young women, boys and girls, Filipinos throughout the Philippines with a commitment, I will go, I will come unto Christ and I will go, I will serve. Filipino saints have been a light to all the world in answering the call to serve full-time missions. Though we now forge ahead with a new logo and a heightened vision, we do not leave behind the great miracle of Filipino youth answering the call to serve full-time missions. President Nelson declared in April of this year, quote, Today I reaffirm strongly that the Lord has asked every worthy, able young man to prepare for and serve a mission. Missionary service is a priesthood responsibility for Latter-day Saint young men. For you young and able sisters, a mission is also a powerful but optional opportunity. What you contribute to this, world is ma to this work is magnificent. Pray to know if the Lord would have you serve a mission and the Holy Ghost will respond to your heart and mind." Close quote. In the coming years, as we align with our declaration, Come unto Christ, I will go, I will serve, we will one day see tens of thousands of Filipinos serving missions. And we will remember back on the 4600 missionary miracle and fondly declare, it was a good start. President Nelson stated, the temple lies at the center of strengthening our faith and spiritual fortitude because the Savior and his doctrine are at the very heart of the temple. Everything taught in the temple through instruction and through the Spirit increase our understanding of Jesus Christ. His essential ordinances bind us to him through sacred priesthood covenants. Then, as we keep our covenants, he endows us with his healing, strengthening power. Close quote. Coming unto Christ and going to the temple are inseparably connected. 
And this is what we want to impress upon the youth as they prepare to go and serve. Sister Bangeter, will you, will you share with us your thoughts about this beautiful vision for the future? Thank you. This inspires me, this vision. It touches my heart to see how Heavenly Father has his eyes upon the Philippines and these beautiful people. You're a nation who loves Jesus Christ and you love families. So whether you're a Lolo or a Lola or a new young couple just starting their family or a young single adult or part of this amazing rising generation, as you turn and face the temple doors and prepare yourself for those covenants, your lives will be blessed. Our Heavenly Father loves you. Our Savior loves you. Maybe you're like me and part of a part member family. Maybe you're alone in your family and preparing for the temple. But you will be blessed. And as you prepare for the temple and keep your covenants, your family will be blessed for eternity. I love my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I love the heart of the Filipino. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I bear witness that the Lord has found favor with the Filipino saints. He has indeed found this great nation worthy, this great community of saints in the Philippines, worthy through the fulfillment of the great 4,600 missionary miracle. And now has granted to us a higher and holier vision as we focus upon our covenants and the ordinances we will come unto Christ we will know him we will be like him I bear witness he lives and this is his church and we are his people I love you in the sacred name of Jesus Christ Amen it will now be our pleasure to invite the husband and wife tandem of Justin and Dadai Baluyot, both returned missionaries, to perform the new version of their composition, Come Unto Christ, I Will Go, I Will Serve, theme song. Thereafter, we'll be pleased to hear from Elder and Sister Revilio. Whenever I go inside the 
sacred, beautiful, beautiful house of the Lord. Every day I will repent, so I always feel you here with me. With every breath I comprehend what you did in Gethsemane. You gave your life, so I will And I will go, I will serve thee I will be part of your army No matter where you send me I share my testimony I will go, I will serve thee I will be part of your army And I will go, I will serve thee I will be part of your army No matter where you send me I'll share my testimony I will go, I will serve thee I will be part My dear brothers and sisters, what a wonderful evening to be here in the grounds of the Philippine Cebu Temple. What a wonderful sight it is to be with these wonderful brothers and sisters. Ang puso ko po ay nagagalak ngayong gabi na makapiling po kayong lahat at yung ating mga brothers and sisters na nasa nanonood sa Facebook at sa YouTube channel natin ngayong gabi. My dear brothers and sisters, today marks a new beginning as we recommit ourselves to stay on the covenant path and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ with a renewed enthusiasm. The Come Unto Me, I Will Go, I Will Serve initiative that was launched today will usher in a new era of increased spirituality and lifelong discipleship. Not just among our young people, but in entire families as well. Elder Renlan described what is happening in the Philippines as an inflection point in the history of the church here in our beloved land. Inflection point means in mathematics as the point where the curvature of a function changes direction. In real world, an inflection point could also be described as the beginning of something new and that things are beginning to change. The inflection point can mark the beginning of momentum. 
And President Nelson talked about spiritual momentum in his last April 2022 General Conference address. We have momentum here in the Philippines with a historic number of men and women who had responded to the call to serve a mission. Aside from the increased numbers, we have also seen better prepared missionaries going into the field. In that same message he gave last April 2022, President Nelson said that one of the positive, one of the actions we can take to help us maintain positive spiritual momentum is to get on the covenant path and stay there. For those who may still have questions what a covenant path really means, let us break it down and analyze each word. A covenant, o tipan sa Tagalog, is a sacred agreement between us and God. God sets the specific conditions and He promises to bless us as we obey those conditions. A path can mean a physical walkway leading to a certain destination, but in this case, covenant path refers to the different ordinances that mark the way for us to return to the presence of our Heavenly Father. Covenants mark the path back to God. These sacred acts are performed by the authority of the priesthood and are scattered throughout our lifetime as milestones. All the saving ordinances of the priesthood are accompanied by covenants. The covenant path includes being baptized, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, priesthood ordinations, and going to the temple to receive our endowment and being sealed in marriage. Alalhanin lamang ninyo na kapag nagpatuloy kayo sa inyong paglalakbay sa buhay ngayon, kasama ninyo sa Yeso Kristo. Mahal niya kayo at siya ay maglalaan ng mga tutulong sa inyo tulad ng inyong mga magulang, mga mahal sa buhay, mga leader at inyong mga kaibigan. Hindi tayo mag-isang tumatahak sa landas na ito. Ibinibigkis tayo ng mga tipan sa ating tagapagligtas na si Heso Kristo. Tulad ng napakagandang tinuro sa ating kanina ni Elder Bangeter, tumatanggap tayo ng nagpapalakas at nagbibigay kakayahang kapangyarihan ni Kristo kapag binigkis natin ang ating sarili sa Kanya sa pamamagitan ng mga tipang ito. As the Savior promised us in John 15, verse 10 to 11, If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Inaanyayahan ko kayo na alamin kung matutupad ang kanyang pangako sa atin. Manatiling tapad sa inyong mga tipan. Sundin ang mga kautosan. Sa paggawa nito, mananatili kayo sa kanyang pag-ibig at malulubos ang inyong kagalakan. Looking back, I can see that the different chapters of my life and my journey on the covenant path can be compared to our new logo. I grew up in a Latter-day Saint home where the example of my parents inspired us to come unto Christ. Being active in church helped me gain a testimony and desire to serve others. I went to the temple and served a full-time mission. I married in the temple and served the Lord in various callings. In every step of the way, no matter what country we lived in, our church family was there to help us overcome whatever challenges we faced. And the journey on the covenant path continues. We want to make sure that the gospel traditions we, are, we have are passed on to our children, their children, and so on. As we do our, as we do our part in supporting this new vision, I can imagine more and more of our young people having the same experiences I had. 
enjoying the same blessings I receive and similarly doing their best in building up the kingdom of God in this part of the vineyard. As parents, how can we prepare our children for a lifetime on God's covenant path? Because He loves us, He trusts us, and knows our potential, Heavenly Father has given us the opportunity to help our children enter and progress along His covenant path, which is the path to eternal life. There are many ways to prepare our children for this journey on the covenant path, and Heavenly Father will help us discover the best way to help them. As we seek inspiration, keep in mind that not all learning happens during scheduled lessons. In fact, part of what makes learning at home so powerful is the opportunity to learn by example and through small, simple moments, the kind that occur naturally in the flow of daily living. Just as following the covenant path is a consistent, lifelong process, so is learning about the covenant path. Here are some things we can do in our family to get into and stay in the covenant path. One of them is whenever we have an experience that strengthens our faith in Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, share it with your children. When our child makes a wrong choice, speak joyfully about the gift of repentance. Whenever we notice our child doing something that he or she promised to do, give sincere praise. Teach that keeping commitments, commitments helps us prepare to keep covenants. Make the sacrament a sacred and joyful event in the family. Make priesthood ordinances be part of our family. As parents, show the example by holding current temple recommends and going to the temple regularly. Teach our children what they need to do and how they should live to receive a temple recommend and participate worthily in proxy baptisms. Display a photo of the temple at home. Always talk about the temple in our Come Follow Me study sessions and during family home evening. Receive a patriarchal blessing. Share our patriarchal blessings with them and help them prepare to receive their own. Serve a mission. If you serve the mission, talk openly and often about your experiences or invite friends or family members who serve missions to talk about theirs. We could also talk about ways we have shared the gospel with others throughout our life. Help our child Think of ways he or she can share the gospel. And lastly, involve your family as you minister to others and magnify your callings. A gospel-centered home established by righteous parents is the best place for the rising generation to get into and stay in the covenant path. Ang isang magandang halimbawa nito ay sina Eric at Gloria Corazon Andrada mula sa San Fernando, La Union. Ang kanilang dalawang anak na lalaki ay bahagi ng 4,600 missionary na ang hangaring maglingkod ay hindi napigilan ng pandemya. Bilang mga magulang, nakadama sila ng bahagiang pangamba para sa kalusugan at kaligtasan ng kanilang mga anak. Ngunit ang kanilang pananampalataya ay mas malakas at lubos ang pagtitiwala nila sa Diyos. Kaya binigay nila ang kanilang buong suporta at paghihikayat sa kanilang mga anak. Ang kanilang panganay na anak na si Alvin Joshua ay umuwi noong Hulyo 2022 matapos maglingkod ng dalawang taon sa Philippines Baguio Mission. Siya ay orinal na tinawag na maglingkod sa Manchester, England. Ngunit dahil sa mga restriksyon sa pagbiyahe, siya ay nareassign sa kanyang home mission. Ang kanilang pangalawang anak, na si Dalin Ivan ay kasulukuyang naglilingkod sa Philippines Quezon City Mission. Nakilala ko si Elder Andrada nang puntahan ko ang kanilang misyon kumakailan. Napag-alaman ko na huminto siya sa kanyang pag-aaral sa Ateneo de Manila University upang magmisyon. 
Napakahusay niyang misyonaryo ngayon. Siya ay nagbibigay ng training sa kanyang bagong companion na bagong misyonary. Brother Andrade says, As parents, I quote him, As parents, we only want our children to be happy. And they found it while serving a full-time mission. We can never exchange the joy they feel and gain from serving the Lord for anything. Sending them to serve missions despite the pandemic has been a wise and inspired decision. For brother and sister Andrada, the best way to prepare their children to serve missions is by being examples of covenant keepers who serve and minister joyfully. They would invite the missionaries for family home evening, provide them with referrals, and they would help and support young adults in their ward as they prepare to serve missions. They counsel parents not to prioritize academics and careers over serving missions, over seminary, attending FSY. According to Sister Andrada, school will prepare them for life while missionary service will prepare them for eternity. Our son returned as a more loving and caring person. He was transformed by his mission, and he found the kind of joy that parent could only wish for their child. Maraming salamat po to all the Eric and Gloria Andradas in the church for preparing and helping your children to come unto Christ. Make and keep covenants and serve a full-time mission. I invite all of us to follow their examples. Brothers and sisters, I testify that this is a special time in the history of the church in the Philippines. The Lord has poured out his blessings and bestowed many miracles to us. I witness that as we come unto Christ, make and keep our covenants with him and serve him we will overcome the world and find greater peace and true joy in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Magandang gabi po, brothers and sisters. I am so much thankful to be here. My joy is full. Growing up, I, I can say that we have seen how the growth of the church in the Philippines, brothers and sisters. Kami po ay nabinyagan bilang family noong 1970s. So we never thought that we will come this far, brothers and sisters. We are so much thankful that we are part of being member of the church. I mean, na naging kabilang po kami sa member ng simbahan. That's a big decision that my parents um did, nagpapasalamat po kami sa kanilang decision that we were able to join the church. Na-bless po ang aming buhay, personally at as a family, nung po kami ay naging member ng simbahan. Brothers and sisters, alam ko po na we are a chosen generation. Have you ever wondered why ngayon po, na, ngayon po nagkaroon ng simbahan dito sa ating bansa? Bakit po nito pong 1961, itong 1960s? Bakit po hindi 200 years ago? So, brothers and sisters, this all happens because the Lord loves us. Hindi po ito coincidence, but it's, ito po ay pinili ng Panginoon na magkaroon tayo ng totoong simbahan sa panahon na ito. Kung kailan po tayong lahat ay buhay, at lalo na po yung ating mga generations, ng bagong generation ng missionaries, ito po ay pinili, hindi po ito nangyari ng coincidence lamang. Brothers and sisters, I'm so much thankful that I... I'm enjoying the gospel of Jesus Christ in my life. Na ito po yung pinili natin. Alam ko po, brothers and sisters, that if we will go and if we will serve, the Lord will bless us. Will bless us tremendously because it happens to us. I know that this is the only true church, brothers and sisters, and would like to leave these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
We appreciate the Legazpi Philippine Stake Youth and YSA Choir for that beautiful hymn, Have I Done Any Good? And thank you, Elder and Sister Revilio, for your leadership, for your examples. Thank you for helping us visualize how this expanded Come Unto Christ, I Will Go, I Will Serve initiative can be implemented within the homes and the families of Filipino saints. We express our sincere appreciation to all who have joined with us this evening and to all who served tirelessly behind the scenes to make this historic fireside possible. Following my concluding remarks, the Mandawi Philippine State Youth Choir will perform High on a Mountain Top and Sister Maurice Dilanila of the Cebu Philippine Stake will offer the benediction. We have indeed been blessed, dear brothers and sisters, this evening. It has been a great joy to be with you here on the grounds near the temple, as well as gathered online all throughout the Philippines. It is historic in this regard. Brothers and sisters, for those of you online, we enjoyed some liquid sunshine while we were meeting. At the beginning of this meeting, I thought to myself, I believe the angels of heaven are happy and these are tears of joy falling upon us. There's been such a beautiful spirit here with us. Now, may we go forward, recommit, and reaffirm our devotion to come unto Christ through the covenant path participating in the ordinances, making and keeping the sacred covenants of the gospel, and keeping our eyes, our thoughts, and our goals firmly focused on entering the Lord's holy house, participating in sacred ordinances, and then, empowered by that experience, going forth to serve. In the sacred name of Jesus Christ, amen. I will go, I will serve thee, I will be part of your army, no matter where you send me, I'll share my testimony, I will go.
Our Father, we thank Thee. We thank Thee that we're here right now, uh, joining the fireside, and we thank Thee that we are part of this church and knowing the truth. Why are we Why are we here? And I'm very thankful for the blessings, and I'm very grateful for having missionaries in this church to teach others the truth and also one day I will also teach others to know the truth in the name of Jesus Christ Amen I will go, I will serve 